Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hello Dave. We are going to start with Terra X and Project Greenfield. For the main faction Terra X, we have had some uh, some housework or householding to do in, in our um, systems. There's been a few places where things have got uh, slipped a little bit out of, uh, of where we wanted it. So we've had some uh, some work to be done there, moving some, uh, some things back. But that's just, you know, the way it is when you have, uh, have the number of systems that we have that you constantly have to go back and there's a bit of maintenance upkeep in order to keep them in, uh, in a good p position where we want them. A lot of work has also happened in uh, O'Rare where of course Project Greenfield um, is going on, where we're working with the code to build hopefully a really, really nice farming heaven. There's been a number of conflicts in the system and we are currently working towards um, maneuvering all the factions into the state we want them to, to be able to start this um, transfer of settlements. If you watched last week, you will know that I talked about how our plan is to transfer a lot of the other settlements over to a single faction and then just dumping that faction completely and thereby locking the system, hopefully if it works, locking the system in a very stable anarchy state. That is the plan. And what we're doing right now is we're maneuvering factions around and as factions are swapping places and they're being maneuvered around, that does trigger a lot of conflicts. So there was a lot of elections and wars and civil wars going on in the system and that probably will for the foreseeable future as we are, a lot foreseeable future hopefully, but for some time there's going to be a lot of conflicts as we are maneuvering stuff around and, and, and part of those conflicts is going to be to begin that process of transferring settlements over. And we need to be a little clever about it because settlements can only be transferred during a war or a civil war. They cannot be transferred during an election. So there might be situations where if you want to transfer the between two factions with the same government type that would then normally cause an election, we have to bounce the settlements of a, a third faction in such a way that we actually get them um, in the war so we can transfer them um, correctly. Moving over to the main news in Elite Dangerous last week, we got update 9. And with that, we got the new SRV, the Scorpion. We got a bunch of new multi limpid controllers added into the game, as well as settlement site missions. Now, I've already done a video on the new SRV. It seems okay. Um, relatively well balanced, I think. The limpets, I haven't had a chance to look at too much. I've seen some, some talk about it. They are not being able to be engineered. I, get, I haven't been able to go in and, and check it yet. It's been a very busy weekend, um, so I haven't had a chance to play around with those, but more about that later. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see. But of other things, there has also been a number of bugs introduced into the game with this update, as has now become tradition. One of them is pretty severe, I would say, it is particularly nasty, and it's causing lockdowns of the game, uh, the, the the outfitting area when you store modules, and sometimes the game just locks up, and, and I've even seen people that say they can't get in the game at all until this has been fixed. So it seems to be a pretty severe one, and I'm pretty sure Frontier is aware of it, and uh, I think I read somewhere they were planning a patch here early, um, early next week, or this week actually, so it may already be, uh, uh, be out by the time this video goes live. But yeah, update 9 is out, bringing a lot of new stuff mainly to Odyssey players and a few bucks for people on Horizons. Last week, an early version of the Fleet Carrier Interiors was also leaked. It turns out that with update 9, the Fleet Carrier Interiors was actually added in the game. While not directly accessible, you can't really go in there. Uh, and the whole area had just uh, like metal covers for all the windows, so you couldn't look in there. But there was a small mistake in the... Uh, in the in the texture or in, in the in the model the, that allowed you to slip a camera in between a gap between a window and a panel and you could then have the free camera and fly around in there it, a lot of the areas were closed off and lights were off and it wasn't really easy or clear to see exactly what what those areas contained and videos began floating around showing the interiors of uh, of the fleet carriers which looks really really well designed i'm really liking the, the design as they are right now and you have to remember these are still very early days now after this was um was leaked frontier went out and actually posted their own video of the fleet care interiors showing it doing one of their live streams i believe it was on thursday where they had a, a, a proper tour of the fleet care interiors with all the lights are on so you could actually see what was in the room and just hadn't it wasn't like a dark grainy mess i must say i well done frontier um to handle it, it like that that now that the it was out anyway that then instead of it just being a lot of like 
dark grainy shots of, uh, of, of of rooms without lights on that they go out they post a proper video showing it where they're at for now and to be honest wish they would do something like this a lot more feedback seems to be really positive seems to be really well made and it is this early stages when they're still developing it this is now the feedback is, is the most valuable feedback you got after launch always means it's a lot more like labor intensive to fix but the earlier in the process you get feedback the better so i really wish they would be do more of these things say hey yeah we're just going to show you what we got so far over in star citizen we had a q a on the misc odyssey last week now the main question i wanted to highlight here was regarding the refinery because i think that's been one of the biggest questions on people's mind is how is this refinery going to work and as i assumed in the video i did on this ship the refinery is only going to be able to refine fuel that means you can scoop fuel for hydrogen fuel or you can refine continuum into quantum fuel you're not going to be able to take mined ore and then refine it into cargo and then put it into the ship storage for that you're still going to have to head to the rest stops that health refineries to get those kind of ores refined while that is a bit of a shame i would really like to see a mobile refinery that you could fly around and use to refine ore um, I still think the Odyssey is going to be a uh, amazing ship. I'm looking forward to take a look at it when it's been released. CIG is also getting into the holiday season spirit, and they have made a like 12 days of Christmas, or I guess it's their, it, in their case, it's their um, what, is it, what do they call it? Luminali celebration. <laughs> I guess I guess they didn't want to call it Christmas, but yeah, basically for the next 12 days, or well, starting I think Saturday. Uh, and for the next uh, 12 days, they're going to be handing out some uh, some in-game items or forum perks or whatever um, that you can go and claim for free. There's going to be a link in the description, of course. The first day we got an in-game like Christmas sweater you can go wear, like a cosmetic item. Uh, and here the second day we got a, a little forum batch um, with a little Christmas star in it. So small, small things like that they're going to give out every day and I assume that the, the price is going to... Um, um, to probably be a little bit more exciting as we move closer and closer to Christmas. So, link will be in the description if you are interested in picking up some free loot. Also, patch 316 is now in open PTU. <laughs> we, we're barely done talking about all the stuff for 315. I only tested half of it and and we already have 316. I'm getting stressed by this. <laughs> we have 316 ready on PTU and it's now opened up for everybody. Uh, it was closed just for wave one PTU for just a few days and now it's open up. It's been a really, really rapid PTU cycle this time. I'm pretty sure they're trying to get 316 out before Christmas. And it was also a really short period between 15 and 16. But again, the stuff that we're going to get in 316 is also a little bit little bit less than what we had in, in 15, I would say. One of the things they are changing in 316 is they're doing a rework of the grab lab or the gravitational levitation technology in the game. If you've ever done any kind of hover bikes or anything that has gravitational technology in it, you will know that they have a tendency to um, to bottom out the levitators and just smack into the ground and explode in pieces that if you're still on board, well, yeah, then uh, then it's not going to end well. And the same thing when you have to get off it, it will either end up, if you just disembark, it will end up like hovering two meters above you so you can't get back or it will just turn off and just fall straight onto the ground. Neither is a, is a super pleasant experience, but they're now reworking the uh, that system so that hopefully with 316, um, hover bikes is going to be a lot more stable and have a lot less tendency to just randomly crash into the ground and uh, and explode and be those really fast to get around vehicles as they are supposed to be. We're also getting a new type of missions. We are now getting atmospheric bounty hunting missions. They're going to work in much the same way as the usual bounty hunting mission. You're going to be sent to a location, but this time it's going to be planet site where you're going to have to find yourself a target in a ship that you're going to hunt down and kill and then you receive a bounty. So pretty much the same um, mechanic as we have with the existing bounties, only that they are now planet side instead of in a debris field or an asteroid field or something like that. But I think probably the headline feature of 316 is Jump Town 2.0. If you're not familiar with Jump Town, it was a station, surface side station, that um, due to a bug was offering some illegal uh, drugs for very, very favorable prices and people were making a ton of money from going down there, picking them up and flying them uh, all around the Stanton system to sell. That caused a uh, unintended player event where some players would s simply just set up 
um, defensive perimeters around Jump Town, and they would charge entrance fees for transport ships coming in. And it caused a whole lot of PvP because the longer you could hold Jump Town, the more money you would make. You would just make make money on all the trade ships coming in, and there would be other um, players who would then try to take over so they could get the benefit from it. This was just nothing that was like intended. This was just pure like emerging gameplay that the players just began to do. CAG has now made an event in game that's going to revolve around that, where they're going to have missions that's going to pop up. Um, from time to time, it's not going to be a constant thing. They're going to pop up at, at certain intervals. And then you're going to have basically two missions that's going to pop up. There's going to be a base somewhere that has some um, some illegal cargo. And you can either you can pick the legal or the illegal mission. If you pick the legal mission, your job is to go down, get that cargo out of there and bring it back to um, to some law enforcement, depending on who has offered the mission. On the other hand, there's also the legal side of the mission. That means you have to go and get the same cargo, but you need to bring it to Grim Hex and and sell it to uh, um, to the black market. So you're going to have basically two sides of the um, fighting over the same cargo, and they're going to have to bring it either to the to the good guys or the bad guys. It's going to be interesting to see, and there's going to be a lot of PvP around it. I'm pretty sure, and. I think also it's going to change the way people PvP a little bit because obviously right now when people go out and they PvP they just shoot people up and then the whole ship explodes. But I think there's going to be a lot more now if you want to actually steal the cargo then you're going to have to find a way to disable people's ships, shoot their engines or whatever you can figure out to uh, to avoid the ships getting fully destroyed. Um, I don't know how you would, would go about it, but we'll see how that uh, that evolves. It's going to be interesting to see when uh, when these new missions begin to come to the live server. Finally, I just quickly want to talk about the live stream tomorrow. Um, as I said, there's a lot of things that I haven't checked out in update uh, 9 for Elite Dangerous, so that's what we're going to go and do tomorrow. We can play a little bit with the SRV, but I actually mainly want to focus on the Limpets. I want to theorycraft, I want to look at them, look at the stats, compare them to the existing ones, figure out what is good, what is bad, what situations are you going to use them, what situations are you definitely not going to use them, or are they even worth considering at all? All that is something that I will be discussing during the live stream tomorrow, which of course, as always, will be live streamed here on YouTube, as well as over on Twitch, and it will be at 8 o'clock in game time. I hope we'll see you guys there. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.